and welcome back to another video everybody. I am again in Fontana, California and a week ago I was in this very same location. I'm currently in the parking lot of City Hall in the city of Fontana. A week ago I came out to shoot panels on this very film camera. Small little problem that happened along the way. I actually shot 24 images, 24 pictures that I thought would constitute about four or five panos and then some miscellaneous shots. Turns out when I went to take it in to get processed, there was zero on the roll. So the fine people over at the Photoshop gave me a credit. Um, <laughs> I just, I just shook my head. It's one of those moments where, you know, as a newbie, as a rookie, as a JV player in the area of film, you learn things. I actually don't know exactly what happened. This is the confession, and I just want to talk a little bit about film and rolling film and doing everything I thought was right when I was loading the film. But here's the one caveat. That film had been in my truck for about a month, and when I decided to go out and shoot last week's video, that, that I just took it for granted that the film was was ready to go and in there and, and ready to shoot some really cool images. And for all intents and purposes, the act of shooting and getting all the images that I did was spectacular. I, I had a really good time. I'm just out here today to actually take all those images again. The skies don't have as nice a backdrop. They're pretty just blue. And when you, I can't complain about blue skies, but I love that there were some clouds in my images. It just, it, it just broke up the image a little bit. So today's shots uh, won't be that way. And this video is not about those shots because you can watch my last video and see actually the shots that I took today, but in that last video. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to each location again and we'll just chat a little bit about confessions from a newbie film photographer and perhaps we could talk about some of the things that I could have done to eliminate some of those casualties, if you will. All right, I'm gonna shoot this shot. It's actually of the city hall here in Fontana. I really loved this shot. I'm not gonna explain every shot again. Um, again, you can watch that last video that I did. All right, I'm currently at one of the locations I was at last week. It's this kind of fireworks graveyard that they basically hold these fireworks stands until the 4th of July and so on and so forth. Once again, you can see it on the video I just shot. So as I think about the process, one of the major things that could have gone wrong was that the film itself wasn't actually rolled in right. It had been, like I said, a month or two since I revisited this camera. I just, in my head, thought the film was ready to go. Maybe it was never rolled in correctly or loaded correctly, so that would have been dumb, but, and I guess it was kind of dumb of me to head out onto a shoot thinking that there was film in the camera and not really having any, but there was film in the camera. I just don't know how it got unwound if, and or if it was never wound. So that's on me. To ensure a good load into a film camera, you take your canister, you position it into the slot that it needs to go into, usually the left side of the camera, pull on the lip of the film and insert it into the receiving or take up spool and then wind the shutter once, click it, wind it again, making sure that you're feeling good about the loading process, and then go ahead and close the back. And typically some people load it a couple more times and fire off a few more shots before they get going. And typically it'll be on shot one. Or another option is if you're not completely sure where it's set at, go out into the field and actually shoot multiple shots of what you're gonna want anyway. So two things can happen there. One, you're securing the right positioning of the film and or you're shooting extra exposures of the same thing. We're gonna keep going with this and talking about things you can do to have a good film experience. All right, let's get these shot off. Hey gang, it is a couple days later and I am back in the studio and I am glad and proud to report that all the shots, well, most of the shots came out this time, the second time around. And I must confess that I totally dropped the ball on my initial shoot and it really came down to making certain I had the right film 
in the camera and that it was really loaded correctly. I think the key mistake was letting that camera sit around in my vehicle for more than a month that's just a faux pas. That's, I don't know what was going through my mind thinking that I could go out and shoot. It's certainly not a disposable camera that I was using and somehow the film got unwound or I really never set the film canister inside of the film camera properly. I really think that that was the main problem. But mission accomplished, I got my shots off and I was successful. Please see my last video. You get to see all my shots there. But let me finish off with two more things that are critical when going out to shoot film. Understand how light will affect your exposures. Now it's no different than in a digital camera, but at the same time, it's uber critical because you don't get to necessarily review or not necessarily, you don't get to review any of your shots until you get them back or you process them yourself. And so once you send them off for processing, it's fingers crossed, but you can eliminate a lot of the guesswork by getting your exposure settings correct. And that comes down to really understanding your camera and your environment that you're shooting in, or you can use some support. I recommend two tools in lieu of a spot meter or a light meter if you're not shopping for one currently. And that would be to use your digital camera, use the live view in your digital camera if you have one, and utilize the settings from your digital camera, which I have done on multiple occasions, and it's worked out pretty good. And or just download an app. I have for the iOS system, Light Meter Pro, which actually worked pretty good. It's pretty decent. Now, this isn't perfect, but it's better than nothing. I would give those two resources or tools a try. Hey, I'm thinking now I should probably do a video on utilizing this light meter app and shooting 24 exposures using this light meter. What do you think? You down for that? I think that's going to be one of my next videos. I'm keen on that idea. And here's the last tip for you. As soon as you are done shooting the last image on your camera roll, make certain to rewind or unwind or wind your film immediately because it's important to get it back into the canister. What you certainly want to be looking for when you wind the film back into the canister, and that is some tension. If you do not have tension, you might have a problem. The film either never took or it's gone back into the canister and you are done. Maybe you didn't shoot any images. Maybe you have some images or in my latest case, I have 24 images. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. If you liked any part of this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Hit that bell. It'll notify you when I put up new videos. Love you guys. Appreciate it. I got more in the tank. More coming soon. Thanks, everybody. Peace.